Have you ever done chores on a cold Canadian winter morning? Come with me and you can see exactly what winter chores really look like. Hi, I'm Michelle from JMC Family Farms. People are often intrigued to see what do morning chores actually look like and why would you ever want all that work? When I'm doing morning chores, I find it really relaxing. I often listen to podcasts and it's just quiet time. On my way to feed the horses first, but check this out. It really is beautiful, but we better get moving because Peanut's gonna be really mad. So we always start with the horses first. Chores have to be done morning and night, and it doesn't matter if it's cold, if it's raining, or if you're not feeling well. Your animals depend on you to care for them and feed them, so you can't ever miss a day. Our horses are fed in individual stalls. This really helps because they actually get supplements and they each get different sorts of supplements to help them stay healthy. The other thing is, is that Peanut does have some dominance issues and this, especially around food. So that really helps us to make sure that he feels, <laughs> smoke a bag in her bucket, that he feels safe and secure and that he knows that no one is gonna take his food. So that really helps us in our scenario that we've got the space that we can actually give them their own place to eat. Something else that's really helpful for me is I have these extra liners in my glove. So what I do is, I can keep my liners on, but then pull my gloves off and then my hands aren't freezing. Peanut always gets his first. Hi, bud. Okay, your nose. And then Mocha's next. Hey, girl. Mocha paws a lot. She's always done that ever since we got her. She always paws with her left front foot and that's just a pattern that she's done. With our stall door, you can see outside here, there's pellets. I actually have to keep those there because she always pees right at the door. And if I don't keep those pellets there, then it leaks out the door and into the, into the hall. So it doesn't matter how thick I make those shavings at the door, they always come leaking out. So that actually is a great solution if anyone else has a problem like that. While the horses are eating their breakfast, we'll get them some hay and we'll put that out in the field. But this is where I take all of those beautiful pictures is when I'm coming out to do hay in the morning. And this is the view. It's so nice to be outside and I know that it's early, but it's so nice to be able to be outside and just enjoy some fresh, fresh air before we get our day started. You can see Peanut's done and uh, <laughs> he's telling me to hurry up again. He's very vocal. We feed in square bales here. So what we do is we actually spread the hay all around the field into different piles. That way each horse, we only have two. So that way each horse has access to lots of hay. There's no fighting. Nobody has to worry that they're not gonna get enough food. So this is a really good solution. Plus we spread the hay out quite far within our paddock because it then makes them move around. Of course, in the winter and in the cold, there isn't a pasture where they would be grazing. So this way it forces them to move around because otherwise they would stay right in this specific area. So we'll check the water trough and see. So we have a heated water trough. In Canada, the temperatures get so cold below freezing. This water trough is worth every penny. So we do need to fill that. I'll show you the hose that I use. Here is that retractable hose. It's great, it's very pliable. We do take it in. So once we're finished with it, we'll take it inside. But if you wanna know exactly where I got that, just put a comment below and I'll send you the link. Next, we feed our rabbits. So we feed our rabbits, of course, water and food and fresh hay morning and night. A lot of people wonder about the cold weather and how rabbits do in the cold, and they actually do so much better in the cold weather compared to the hot weather. I'm much more concerned about our rabbits in the hot weather than the cold. We actually give them cool water bottles and things like that in the summertime, but in the wintertime, they are far better. With our rabbits, they of course have, they're in a sheltered area to begin with, 
it's right by our barn and then they have houses themselves but it's nice because they're outside so they do have fresh air and then they can have access to sunshine as well and they're not stuck in a building so this area is perfect for them so my other little guy wants water i better get going this was the noisy little guy that's thirsty. With these guys, they flip their dishes all the time. So our solution has, we've made a wooden base for their water. And then this guy really flipped his dishes. So what we did for him is we used a dog dish and then that prevented him from flipping over his kibble all the time. So the story of us getting rabbits was we didn't plan on getting rabbits and someone didn't want a rabbit anymore. and. But then we ended up with one and ended up with multiple and these guys are a litter that we had um their mother passed away and so we actually had to syringe feed them formula out uh, kitten formula we used diluted kitten formula since they were they were approximately as a guess we would say about three weeks old when we saw them um we had always had free range bunnies before but because these ones were hand fed from such a young age we didn't want to let them go so we've had to put them in cages because um in our area there's too many predators so fox coyote that sort of thing and they wouldn't have ever survived if we uh, just left them out on their own so next on the list are our chickens and if you look on the ground you can see that there are some those are either fox or coyote they're not from last night but you can see the tracks there I'll put a link to the video on the screen and it's going to teach you about the importance of being aware of the type of predators that are in your area and it teaches you how to protect your chickens from predators Good morning, girls. Good morning. So the girls get fresh water morning and night. You have a heated water pad. So that really does prevent. You can see in there that the water hasn't froze completely. Last night was really cold. So we will change that. That heated pad works amazing though. This will check, make sure that this is full. So this is layer crumb. They have access to layer crumb all the time, but then they also get extra things. So I'm gonna put some stuff outside. They get like mealworms, sunflower seeds, any sort of table scraps. I always put that outside just because it prevents mice and things like that going into the coop. That's oyster shells in that dish. They have access to that and they eat it when they need it and that helps to keep their shells hard they don't have those soft shells so we're gonna put some stuff outside and then we'll open up their door it's really cold today so i don't know if they'll want to come outside or not so in their actual coop outside they have fresh water out here i also put hay on the ground you can see they weren't outside very much yesterday because they're scratch on the ground from yesterday. I'll open this up for them and we'll see if they'll come outside here. It's really cold today, so I don't know if they will or not. So on the ground, combination of sunflower seeds. Yeah, they're going back in. Usually one comes out. So sunflower seeds are high in protein and that helps to keep their body temperature up. They're gonna go back inside today, especially right now. As the day goes on and the temperature increases, they may come back outside. It is quite cool. So in the colder temperature, they have been spending more time inside their coop at this point. Now we're gonna check for eggs. So we do check for eggs first thing in the morning and then we do check for eggs later on in the day as well. And they typically only lay one to two nesting boxes. So we've got six eggs and then we'll check later on today just in case there's any more. We're back to let the horses out. Peanut always goes first and that's because he needs a little bit of encouragement to get going and he can go and check out what sort of hay looks most delicious for him. Peanut was afraid of my phone, so I didn't want to take him out and scare him. He was really scared. Come on, Mook. He was really scared um, before we got him, and he's overcome so many fears. So I didn't want to scare him. It reminds him too much of a lunging whip. But Moki, she just goes. Moki's not afraid. 
These two are very herd bound and they always want to make sure where the other one is. So they're just checking each other out. If time permits, I like to get stalls done first thing in the morning. Then I know they're done. Then at nighttime, if something comes up or we're off to hockey or something, then I've already got stalls all done and we're organized for the day. If seeing me do my morning chores makes you want to start your own hobby farm, make sure you check out the video on your screen right now. In this video, I'm going to walk you through some things to consider before you start your own farm. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.